Okay. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Rob Shaw. I'm the uh, acting chair of the City of Nashua Zoning Board of Adjustment, and uh, this is the May 23rd, 2023 Zoning Board meeting. Uh, I'm going to go through some intro information, uh, and then we'll get started into the actual business of the, of the, the uh, Zoning Board. Uh, so this evening's meeting is uh, going to be conducted in a hybrid format. The meeting is accessible in person in the third floor auditorium of City Hall, uh, 220 Main Street, and via Zoom at the link posted in all public meeting agendas. Attendance via telephone is available using the Zoom connection details and minutes of tonight's meeting, as well as audio and video recordings, will be available later at nashuanh.gov slash agenda center, select zoning board of adjustment. If anybody has problems accessing the meeting, uh, please call 603-589-3056, and they will help you connect. In the event that the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Uh, the chair is in control of the proceedings and calls upon all who wish to speak in order uh, as their raised hands are observed. That'll be both here uh, in, in person as well as uh, on Zoom. Uh, the board follows uh, meeting protocol procedures that we identify in our bylaws. Uh, the applicant will have um, up to 15 minutes to present their case, followed by questions by the board. And then next, persons that are wishing to speak in favor um, or ultimately with questions or opposition will be asked to speak for up to five minutes. If there are any questions or opposition, then the applicant has five minutes to present their response. And then finally, uh, only one person of any of those that were part of the opposition will be permitted to speak again, and we'll, we'll cover that if that arises tonight. Um, and then be, and that's um, all before the board deliberates and then determines an outcome. Uh, we do use a timer uh, for managing that uh, speaking time, um, and Kate Poirier, Poirier our uh, zoning board coordinator, uh, will notify us when one minute is remaining and again when the speaker's time has expired. Uh, if you are participating by Zoom and wish to speak when the public input is requested, please use the raise hand option, which can be found under reactions on a computer or the more menu on a phone. The chair will call you in turn. Please use the lower hand option when you have completed your question or comment. Also, please mute your microphone until called on to speak. Um, and also just note, uh, in this auditorium, the sound actually carries really well from the audience, so please refrain from any conversations uh, in the audience, and if you need to um, talk about anything, please uh, step outside into the hallway. Uh, and note that uh, we'll, all votes will be taken uh, during the meeting uh, by a roll call. Uh, tonight we'll hear a request for deviation from the National Zoning Code in the form of applications for special exceptions and or variances. A special exception is a request that seeks permission to do something that the zoning ordinance permits only under special circumstances. To grant a special exception, there are five points of law that are required to be met, and these are outlined in the application and will be summarized in the board motions. A variance is a request that seeks permission to do something that the ordinance does not normally permit. Variances also have five points of law to be met, and they're different from those for special exceptions. Per the City of Nashville bylaws and the State of New Hampshire revised statutes, a minimum of three or more affirmative votes are required to approve any application. In addition, this board will hear all, select, all scheduled cases if a quorum of three voting board members is present at this meeting, uh, which does not look like we'll have any issue with tonight. Um, ultimately, any citizen has the right to contest the decision that this board makes. Uh, should we render a decision that you believe is in error, you have the right to request a rehearing. A re written rehearing request must be received by the City of Nashville Planning Department within 30 calendar days from the date of decision. Should this board not grant a rehearing request, you can still file an appeal directly then to the New Hampshire Superior Court. Please contact uh, Mr. Falk of the Planning Department for more information. Uh, for this meeting, uh, we have the following full board members in attendance. Uh, myself as uh, vice chair, acting as chair, uh, Mr. J.P. Boucher, uh, our clerk, uh, Mr. Jack Carrier, and Mr. Steve Lionel, um, our other full board members. Uh, we also have the following alternate members in attendance, uh, Mr. Jay Mankara, 
uh, Ms. Astafia Boras on Zoom and Mr. Josh Nahili, uh, Neely, sorry, <laughs> uh, in, um, uh, in attendance with us tonight. Uh, in addition to the board members, uh, we also have uh, Mr. Sam Duffy, Turfy, the planning manager, and Ms. Kate Poirier, our zoning coordinator. Uh, and uh, we'll start the meeting first by taking a roll call attendance. Um, and Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, Mr. J.P. Boucher? Present. Mr. Jack Carrier? Present. Mr. Steve Lionel? Present. Uh, Mr. Jay Mankara? Present. Mr. Josh Neely? Present. And Ms. Estafia Boras? Present. All right. And myself, Rob Shaw, the Vice Chair, acting as Chair tonight. Um, I'll note that we, um, Normally what we do is we have all members, uh, regardless of whether they're voting on the case or not, uh, participate in questions, discussion, uh, and however, when it comes to the actual vote to act upon uh, what's in front of us, only um, normally the full-time members uh, vote on that, and when there isn't a full uh, representation of the full-time members, which we have tonight, uh, then we will uh, actually have the alternate members uh, participate. Uh, so we'll go through uh, sequentially, and uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Minkara first, uh, Mr. Neely second, and Ms. Boras third, as far as uh, participation uh, for, as we go through the cases. And that'll cycle through, and again, but they will all participate um, uh, throughout the process. Uh, are there any changes to the agenda? No, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. I think uh, unless there's any other things that I forgot, we'll go ahead and move forward with uh, case number one. Uh, and let's see, make sure I get the right. Okay. Um, so case number one, uh, we have uh, Dale A. and George H. Fenton. Uh, owners at 15 Cliff Road, Sheet B, Lot 1820. The request is for a special exception from Land Use Code Section 190-16, Section E3A, for a minor encroachment to encroach a maximum of two feet six inches into the 10-foot required left side yard setback to construct an attached 16-foot by 31-foot six-inch one-car garage, and this is in the R9 zone. Is there somebody here to um, present the case? And, uh, and I'll note this for yourself as well as anybody that comes up to the podium, please make sure you state your name and address for the record. It's part of what we need to have. So if you could do that and then we'll go ahead. Good evening. My name is George Fenton. I live at 15 Cliff Road. Uh, lived in that property for uh, since 1980. Uh, what we'd like to do is finally add a garage to the to the house, a single car garage. Uh, as you said, I think it's like 31 by 20 approximately. Um, the house is like a loop road right off of Harris. So the front the front corner of the house. We've got 11 feet from the corner of the new uh, structure to the property line, but in the back corner, we need two and a half feet. That's basically, that, that is the exception that we're asking for right there. Um, the majority of the houses on the street have a, have a garage. Uh, it's not going to be out of the, you know, the construction or the uh, properties on, 50, on Cliff Road. Uh, we each, as we're getting up here in, in years, we just would like to have car gara uh, a garage so that we can have one car at least covered for the wintertime. Um, on the back of uh, the garage, we also would like to put in um, a laundry room to 
to help us from going up and down the stairs in the basement. So that's basically what we're asking for. Do you have any questions for me? Mr. Carrier? I just uh, wanted to reiterate more on what you said. It, it's like your property is a little skinnier in the back than in the front, which is... Yes. Yeah. The, it, given the way the house is situated, this cliff is kind of curvy there. Right. I, I just want to... And I'm on the... We're on the inside. Yeah. So, you know, those conditions end up if, you know, which is why you're proposal is to cut into the side yard setback but on the back of the garage not not in the front of it right and then I, I notice it looks like you kind of angle park there to the left right now would would your intent is probably still be doing that with the garage or would the garage be kind of be one parking space the garage would be one parking space and then that space where we slant would be like just parking for the other car <coughs> Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. That's the only question I had. Mr. Neely? On the, the left side of your house currently, it looks like there is a chain link fence and some, some larger bushes. Are they still staying there after this project is done? The chain link fence is actually the neighbor's. That's not my fence. So uh, you'll have to ask him if that's staying there. But the, the shrubs, I would, I would like to keep there, yeah. Thank you. Yes, as well. I think that's it for questions from the board. So you can have a seat and we'll okay. see if anybody Thank else wants to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak uh, in favor of the application? Is there anybody on Zoom who would like to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none, uh, is there anybody in the audience who has questions, concerns, or opposition? And uh, seeing none, is there anybody on Zoom, uh, likewise, that has questions, concerns, or opposition? Okay, it looks like none, so I think we can close out uh, the public hearing and we'll open the public meeting. Uh, I guess we'll do the, the usual uh, kind of go around. Uh, Mr. Boucher, your thoughts? Um, I, I'm in support of the application. Um, I, again, I think that um, again with the with the somewhat odd shape of the property, and not not ex it's not highly exaggerated. But again, um, we see where the original house is situated, and um, I think it's reasonable for the one car garage, the size he's looking for, that the the uh, applicant. Uh, and again, um, because of the property line, it's just the rear left rear corner of the house. So uh, again, uh, I think it fits into the neighborhood. Um, I don't think that it's going to detract from anything. And I find that, uh, you know, it meets all the criteria. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Currier? Uh, in summary, I also find support for the reasons Mr. Boucher said. I just also wanted to throw out that, uh, you know, I was concerned if there might be concern on behalf of the, the abutter uh, on that left side, which to me looks like the Harris <coughs> Avenue property, but also, uh, you know, you, it might be less of an impact with the garage because, you know, one car would typically be there versus kind of angle parking and maybe headlights coming over what might be a pool or something like that. So, in, in, you know, I was thinking, well, what if I was the abutter? I, I could, might be either way on that. I didn't really have a decision, but we haven't heard any of objection tonight, and I think uh, I also appreciate the detailed design we have in our packet versus just the length and width where sometimes things go up and there are surprises. This package is very complete with the architectural plans and, and I think it's a, it will be a tasteful addition to the house. Uh, so I, I'm in support of it. Uh, Mr. Lionel. Uh, I'm in, in support. I don't have anything to add to what my colleagues have said. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mankara. Yeah, I, I support it as well. I, it, it's permitted use. It's consistent with the character of the area. It seems to meet all the criteria. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Neely? <coughs> I'm also in support of this application for the reasons as stated by my colleagues. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Boras? I'm also in support of the application for all the reasons already stated by my colleagues. 
And myself, I likewise am. I, the only thing I don't think you guys touched on exactly, but I think you were kind of getting close to, the house does look like it just slightly like, turned a few degrees versus those, the property line. So, so besides like the actual, some of the shape part of things, it's also the house, the, the, the sides of the house aren't exactly parallel and especially to that left edge. And it is, again, a very minimal encroachment. So I, I think uh, it's uh, quite a reasonable request. Would anybody like to offer up a motion? Uh, we'll Mr. Lionel, thank you. I'd like to make a motion for a special exception. Uh, Dale A. and George H. Fenton, owners, 15 Cliff Road, sheet B, lot 1820, requesting special exception from land use code section 190-16E3A for a minor encroachment to encroach a maximum of two feet six inches into the 10 foot required left side yard setback to construct and attach 16 foot by 31 foot six inch one car garage. This is in the R9 zone, Ward 9. Uh, the board finds that this is listed in the table of uses. Uh, we have no uh, testimony that it will create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. <clears throat> Uh, we do, we, the board finds that will not overload public water, drainage, sewer, or other municipal systems. Uh, all special regulations are fulfilled, and it will, uh, the board believes it will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the neighborhood or be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of residents. Therefore, I make a motion to approve this special exception. Mr. Carrier, thank you for your second. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? All right, um, Mr. Currier, how do you vote? Mr. Currier votes in favor. Uh, Mr. Mincara, how do you vote? Mr. Mincara votes in favor. Mr. Boucher? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Lionel? Mr. Lionel votes in favor. And Mr. Shaw votes in favor. That's uh, unanimous, it passes five nothing, and uh, it has been approved, like noted in the introductory comments. Uh, there is a 30-day uh, window of appeal that somebody could request a rehearing uh, request, but you are welcome to go ahead and start to pull permits and proceed with your application. Uh, and, and, but if you have any questions, please contact the planning department. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, thank you. Moving on to case number two. Uh, this is also. Um, a special exception case, uh, Shirley A. Dutton, uh, 2015 revocable trust owner, Catherine Dutton, applicant at 14 Benson Avenue, sheet 10, lot 44. The request is for a special exception from land use code section 190-47, section B, for a major home occupation to operate a life coach slash herbalist business. This is in the RB zone. Is there somebody here to present this case? Welcome, and again, if you could state your name and address for the record. Catherine Dutton, 14 Benson Ave. And feel free to move that mic up. Uh, oh, it's fine. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Did you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You... So I just want to start a, a, a small part-time business, um, life coaching and herbalism. The life coaching will be done mostly uh, by video, and the herbalism I do want to teach a couple classes a month on Thursday, probably Thursday evenings. And um, that's a maximum of seven people coming to my home because that's all I have space for the class for. And that's really all the businesses. If you guys have any questions. Anybody? Uh, Mr. Carrier? I'm just curious uh, if, you know, there were seven folks and seven cars. I, you know, I've gone down all street countless times, but haven't gone by your house until yeah. I went and did a site walk a few days ago. It doesn't look like it's very busy there. It, 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 would there be parking availability or what's uh, yeah, what's I, like there on that Well, there is parking on the street and like on weekends people have parties so people do park on the street and there's never issues with the neighbors that I know of. And I also have a, a large driveway that, which will fit at least four cars. Okay. Like one, two, three. In front of the garage. Is, is your driveway right adjacent to your house, like to the left of it, or? It's on the right. It's on the right. Okay. All right. All set. Thanks. Uh, any other questions from the board? All right. Uh, seeing none, I guess 
You can have a seat and okay. we'll see if there's any other testimony. Is there anybody uh, in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anybody on Zoom who would like to speak in favor of this applica application? Okay, seeing none, uh, is there anybody in the audience with questions, concerns, or opposition? I uh, see none, and is there anybody on Zoom with questions, concerns, or opposition? I think uh, we're all set there, and we didn't. Did we have correspondence on this case? No. No. Okay. So, so I think we'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, let's see, uh, Mr. Courier. Uh, I'm in support of the application. I had a little bit of pause with the perhaps seven clients at a time. Uh, in looking at the site, like I said, never been over there. It looked like there was reasonable parking on the street, but I was there at an off time, and I just didn't know if that would be an issue, but the testimony tonight sounds like that won't be an issue, and at times there's lots of other people parking in that area. And I, I didn't realize that the uh, applicant has a four-car driveway. I must have missed that. So, I, I, I mean, to, in summary, I think it's a low-impact business, and uh, I, I I don't, I think it meets a criteria. That's where I'm at. I'm interested to hear other opinions. Right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Neely? I'm also in favor of this application. Uh, you know, this is, with, with the potential seven customers all being inside the house, um, you know, you can have a maximum of, of three cars on, on the street. I think there's more than enough street parking there. Quite honestly, I don't even think the neighbor's going to know when she's hosting because it's going to be such a low, low impact. And the majority of the business really is going to be uh, online. Um, it's not going to bring down any property values. I mean, all the criteria that we look at are all, all met by this exception. Um, so I, I am in favor of this application. Right, thank you. Uh, Mr. McCarr? I, I also support the application. I think parking was my only concern when I went by the side. I saw, you know, maximum four spaces, but there's on-street parking. and. We didn't hear any concerns from any of the neighbors related to parking, uh, so I support the application. I think it otherwise meets all the criteria. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Boras? I also support the application. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lionel? Yeah, I support the application. Uh, again, like my colleagues, I was a bit concerned with the parking, uh, but the testimony is that there should be sufficient parking and it is uh, a, a low impact uh, one night a week, so it should not be a problem, so I support it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boucher? I also support the application, and you know, you all, we also have the major home occupation affidavit with the 10 uh, criteria that's been uh, acknowledged by the, by the applicant, so I'm comfortable with the application. Support it. Thank, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Um, I'm, and I'm likewise in support. Um, I mean, one of the things I was thinking about, you know, being that this is just a couple times a month type of thing, to me, the level of activity would very much be similar to if somebody was just having a social gathering with friends. So to me, it didn't seem like the kind of thing that you might be different if it was every day, you know, of the week, of, of each week or things like that. But this level seems like it's very consistent with something that might just be equivalent to a social gathering. So it, it um, I, I feel very comfortable with uh, this application. Uh, is would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, Mr. Courier, thank you. Sure, I'd like to make a motion on behalf of Shirley Dutton. Uh, 20015 Revocable Trust is the owner, and Catherine Dutton is the applicant. The address, again, is 14 Benson Avenue, and the request is a special exception from land use code 190-47B for a major home occupation to operate a life coach herbalist business, and this is at Ward 7, the RB zone. This uh, use is listed in the table of uses, 190-15, uh, table 15-1-1. The board, I think, uh, unanimously considers that this would not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. I think the board finds there's reasonable parking if uh, the business uh, maxes out at seven folks at one time one night a week. I think the board finds it will not overload public water drainage or sewer or other municipal systems. Uh, the, the special regulations aren't, there are no special regulations for this particular case. Um, and the board finds it will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the neighborhood or be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents. 
So again, I think it meets the five criteria of a special exception. And again, I make a motion to approve as presented. Is there a second? All oh, second. Thank you, Mr. Lionel. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, and again, a uh, reminder, Mr. Neely is voting on this case. Um, Mr. Lionel, how do you vote? Mr. Lionel votes in favor. Uh, Mr. Neely? Mr. Neely votes in favor. Mr. Courier? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Uh, Mr. Boucher? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. And Mr. Shaw votes in favor. And that passes unanimously, 5 nothing. Um, so as noted, I'll probably keep making this note, uh, there is a chance that somebody could appeal this, uh, but you can go ahead and, and make plans to proceed uh, with, with this approval. So good luck with your effort. Thank you. That takes care of case number two. Our third case of the evening is a use variance. Uh, it's a uh, Milky V. Carabello Cuevas, owner at 82-82 and a half Lock Street, sheet 45, lot 258, requesting a use variance from land use code section 190-15, table 15-1, number 35, to operate a barber shop in a portion of an existing building. This was approved by the zoning board on 6-13-2017, but the barber shop never opened up. It is in the RC zone. Is there someone here to present the case? Yes, good evening. Uh, okay, welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, please uh, state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Melky Caraballo. My address is 82 and a half Lock Street. And I would like to be granted uh, what was once approved uh, for, my, for the business, for the barbershop. We have parking in the back and on the side of the building. And I uh, believe it's not going to interfere with the peace of the neighborhood and uh, the characteristics. So, uh, Please, uh, if you have anything, any concerns, please tell me. Thank you very much. Mr. Neely. In regards to parking, uh, when I did a drive-by of, of the property, it didn't look like there was a whole lot of parking available uh, around the building. Uh, where exactly is the parking that you're, you're speaking of? Because I, I certainly didn't see anything besides what a, a resident would use. Yes, um, there's parking in the back of the building, which uh, fits like about, in the back and the side, it will fit like about six vehicles. So it's like uh, on the corner, so when you go on Chandler, sorry, on Lock Street, right there, you take a left, and there's a driveway, okay? And then also in the rear, um, there's, uh, a space for parking too, in the back of the building. So the, the that that looks like that's enough parking maybe to handle the number of folks you're going to have working there. Because I noticed on the application, you, I think you had six um, booths, for lack of a, a better word, inside there. Where are the customers going to park? And, and the reason I ask for that is, I believe there's no parking as you head south on Lock Street which means you're only available north of Lock Street unless you park on Chandler. And I know the board has had discussions in the past about the amount of traffic on Chandler already. So where are your customers going to park? Well, it's not six barbers at a time. It's uh, six, but it's like some barbers work at a certain hours of the day, and then the other barbers work at other, at other, at other hours. So. Uh, it's by appointment, so when the barbers come in, they're going to park, and then behind, the clients are going to park behind the, the, where the barbers are going to park, so it's not going to be an inconvenience. If that's the plan I have to not obstruct uh, any, any people from parking outside uh, from the neighborhood, you know? Any other questions from the board? And seeing none, I think we're we're good with your uh, testimony. Thank you. I'll see if there's anybody else that has uh, questions from the audience. Is there anybody in, present in the room who has um, who would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anybody on Zoom who would like to speak in favor of this application? Okay, we have.
have none, it appears. Uh, is there anybody in the room who has questions, concerns, or opposition to this application? Uh, seeing none, is there anybody on Zoom with uh, questions, concerns, or opposition? Okay, it appears we have no... Uh, I think we had a letter. We have two letters. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think I might only have the one in front of me. I think it's just one for this application. No, I... Did we get the one other one electronically? No, it's for both. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you're right. It's just, it is... We have two. We right. do. This player says we have two. Yeah. I think one was on the table. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, just one. They should be in your papers. They I came think. with us tonight because there's... Yes. One of them is from... Vicky Batsoyanis and one uh, is from Priscilla Morin. Okay, I thought that that one was regarding the uh, the next case. Yeah, it's, the, the, it's the resident Ash on Ash Street is the second is the next case. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't actually say <laughs> specifically on here, but yeah. I assume okay. that that was yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, we do have a, a letter from Priscilla Morin at uh, 85 Chandler Street. Uh, I'll just try to read, read this into the record. Uh, um, gentlemen, uh, received your notice. Yes, yes, I approve wholeheartedly. This business should continue at 82 and a half Lock Street. Uh, his facility is very well kept. Furthermore, this location has had businesses at this 82 lock for at least since 1940 for a total of 83 years. I have personally witnessed all the transitions. I can assure you I purely, I surely prefer a barbershop than a nightclub. Also, I also can attest uh, Milky is a great person and great personal, great person and pleasant person. Uh, and that was, the letter in support. All right. Um, so that closes the public hearing, and I'll open the public meeting. Uh, thoughts, Mr. Lionel? Uh, I'm in support of this application. Um, you know, the the board had uh, granted it in 2017. Um, I don't see any opposition to it. We do have a, a letter of support. Um, it, it does appear to be a, a, a low-impact business. This uh, location has had businesses in the past. Um, therefore, I, I support it. Uh, Mr. Boucher. Uh, I also support uh, the application. Um, I remember personally using the TV repair shop uh, years and years ago. Um, and um, I did, did recognize that uh, parking um, is a little blind, you have to really look for it. Um, but I, I know there's parking back because I, I used it years and years ago. Um, so uh, I know it's there, um, but I don't think uh, for me um, there is concern about um, parking, uh, especially I, I believe that through testimony, I think the uh, owner of the barbershop is going to, I think, uh, inform his clients on what to do as they come. So. I'm pretty confident that it won't be an issue. So I'm going to support the application. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. McCarr? Uh, I also support the application. I, I, I think, uh, you know, as noted, a variance was previously granted. I think those conditions still remain true. Uh, this has historically been a business. It is true parking can be challenging in the neighborhood, but again, there has pretty much always been a business here and at the other intersections. Although I don't know, I would also imagine that, that you would get some foot traffic as well. It's a pretty dense urban neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Neely. I'm in favor of this application for the reasons uh, stated by my, my colleagues. I, you know, there's been a business there for, for quite a few years. This has already gone through the process back in 2017 and uh, in the letter of support. Uh, so I am in favor of this application. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Curry. Uh, I'm in support of the application. Uh, I was actually on the board when it, it approved this back in 2017. And I was surprised to see this application because I thought it had been in business. I could have 
sworn I'd seen a sign there and occasionally when I would drive by. So I guess the sign was there, but it wasn't open. But uh, at any rate, I think it meets, for the reasons stated by my colleagues, I think it meets the criteria. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Boras? I'm also in support of the application for all the reasons already stated by my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. And I, myself, uh, I'm in support. I don't really have anything else to add to the, what's already been said. Um, is there a motion? Uh, again, uh, Ms. Boras will be uh, the voting member uh, from the alternates for this case. Uh, Mr. Carrier, thank you. Sure, I'd like to make a motion on behalf of Milky Parabolo at 80 and 82 and a half Lock Street. Uh, the request is a use variance from Land Use Code Section 190-15, Table 15-1, Use Number 35, which is to operate a barber shop in a portion of an existing building. Again, this uh, request was approved by the Zoning Board June 13th, 2017, but the barber shop never opened up. I believe the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property given the special conditions of the property and again, this board has identified that this property has been used as a business or the street level portion of the property has been used by a business for many years. We have testimony of it's been used as a business over 80 years. Um, and I think the board believes the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue. Uh, the board finds that this request is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. The board finds it will at not adversely affect property values and surrounding parcels. The board finds it's not contrary to public interest and substantial justice would be served. So again, I make a motion to approve as applied. Is there a second? Uh, thank you, Mr. Lionel. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? All right. Um, Ms. Morris, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Ms. Thank Boris votes in favor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lionel? Mr. Lionel votes in favor. Uh, Mr. Courier? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. Boucher? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. And Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Uh, that passes uh, unanimously. Um, your uh, use variance has been approved. And um, again, there's a 30-day uh, window of appeal. Uh, but uh, you can proceed uh, with your barbershop. And good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Uh, we'll move on to um, case number four. Uh, is another, it's a use variance. Uh, rise above NH LLC owner, Andy Erickson, applicant at 49 Kinsley Street, sheet 84, lot 43, uh, requesting a variance from land use code section 190-46, section D5 to allow a single family home to convert to a halfway house within one quarter mile of a school. This is in the RC zone. Uh, I see uh, we've got somebody here to present the case. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Richard Maynard, a professional engineer with Maynard and Pocket Engineers of Nashua. The project of concern is located at the corner of Kinsley Street and Ash Street. The building is the former community center for the Police Athletic League. It has been empty for several years. The project is located in and is, is permitted conditional use in the RC multifamily zone. The proposal is for a halfway house <coughs> that uh, houses up to 15 residents for 28 days. With me is Andy Erickson from Rise Above New Hampshire, the organization that runs the program scheduled for, for this location. He will outline their proposal. Hello, uh, Andy Erickson, 28 Quincy Street in Asheville, New Hampshire. Um, I can just go through these, read the questions that we had to answer first. Um, the proposed variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood, nor will this variance threaten public health, safety, or welfare in any way. It will be a place for the, uh, the community in dire need for, as such as variance will not be contrary to public interest. And then on to number two, the proposed halfway ho home will observe the spirit of the ordinance because it will provide a safe environment for the public to start the process of healing their mental health and allow them 
a fighting chance to become productive members of society. Number three, this variance would benefit the community immensely because it will be fully staffed residential facility where the public can go for 28 days to start their journey of further treatment. Currently in Nashua area, there is very little support for the community to start the recovery journey. Due to the aforementioned reason, the benefits of this application are not outweighed by the negligible harm to the public or other individuals. Uh, for the proposed halfway home will not diminish the values of surrounding properties because it will fit the characteristic of the neighborhood. And then the uh, last one is the current ordinance of a halfway home must be a minimum of a quarter mile from any correctional facility, orphanage, children's home, similar daycare facility, hotel, motor or tourist court, or any school at any level. Currently, Elm Street Middle School, amongst others, are within the quarter mile. We ask for this variance because without this 28, ha 28 day halfway home, people from the community are not being provided a service that is greatly needed. Um, also, there'll be a total of eight staff members throughout the whole day. The first shift will be four staff members, the second shift will be two, and then the third shift will be two. So it'll be 24 hour surveillance every day, 28, whatever, the whole month. Um, so yeah, I mean, well, full sprinklers, full fire safety, every, every, everything you need, so. Any questions? Mr. Maker. I have two questions, one for staff and one maybe for staff. Um, I, I could be wrong. I don't remember this ever being a single family home. When was the last time it was a single family home? That's a mistake in the app, uh, Richard Maynard for the record. That's a mistake on the application. It's always been a community center for the police athletic league, never been a single family home. Thank you, that's what I thought. Um, and a, a question for staff. Is this use a permitted use but for its location within a quarter mile of a school? Yes, it is. It's a permitted use by conditional permit. It's a conditional use permit. Uh, this structure has been a variety of different things throughout the years, uh, most recently in a legal boarding house, we told them that the uh, permitted use, if they wanted strict residential, was a single family home. That might have been why it was in the at. Otherwise, uh, this is going through the process and we'll need to go to the planning board as well. Thank you. For the record, we wouldn't be here if there wasn't a school or other facility within a quarter mile. We'd go directly to the planning board. Thank you. Mr. Lino, um, the residents that are, are there, um, do they do they go off the outside the building to work? Uh, do uh, they get their meals there? Um, what kind of foot traffic or, or vehicle traffic would be uh, attributable to the residents? There will be no foot traffic. They don't leave. They stay, they basically come, they stay there the full 28 days, and then they move off to our other facilities in Nashua. I don't know. None. They're essentially combined. Can, um, can I have Chris come up? He knows more of that information. Christopher Di Nicola, uh, Two Clock Road, Nashua. I'm the owner of Rise Above and the Process Recovery Center in um, Nashua, New Hampshire. So essentially what it's going to be is um, the transition from, Nashville did a great thing about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, doing, creating this thing called doorways. Um, and through the doorways, people can go there and they can gain access to treatment. Um, we're a treatment provider in Nashville. We, we have sober living housing as well as outpatient, um, uh, intensive outpatient, partial hospitalization. We own 17 Factory Street, and we have full clinical staff, mental health, SUD, um, doctors on staff, and uh, we work in conjunction with the city, with Drug Corps, with Harbor Homes, we work with the, uh, the state. We were a part of the creation of Revive, which is here in Nashua, the Governor's Task Force, where we have board members that sit on NH Core. So uh, the 28-day program came about, which, which we now require, pretty much based upon the, the in, uh, 
implementation of doorways in Nashua. So what that is is people walk in, and now we're getting an influx of people calling from the doorways that need to, before they get to our level of care that we previously offered, which is partial hosp hospitalization, which is um, a 28 day. So 28 days, they come in, they're not asked to go to six, six hours worth a group a day. Um, they're actually able to stabilize for 28 days. They, they see their clinicians, the group is less stress, stressful. They'll be in group about three hours, meals will be provided. Um, it's, it's that gap in between from they've gone to detox for seven to 10 days. Now they're able to come to us for 28 days and then they can transition to our partial hospitalization program, which is a full continuum of care. Um, so essentially, there won't be a lot of foot traffic. Um, we'll have, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, other than the staff coming in and, and leaving based off the, the, uh, the different shifts, but the clients will actually be in the housing for the 28 day. Any other distribution? Just a question, maybe totally unrelated, but um, in the past, I remember having discussions, and we've had discussions about um, where neighbors have been concerned because of um, the, um, the, the residents, the temporary residents, would be outside um, doing whatever, you know, maybe just going outside to have them smoke or whatever. And sometimes th that has been somewhat disturbing to some neighbors. And I think it's always due to, again, the way the place is managed, mm -hmm. what the expectations are. Um, so, you know, I think that this is a very compact neighborhood. Um, so what, just, just so I understand, what is your picture about, I mean, when you say com confined to the building, are they literally confined to the inside of the building? Or are they, do they get, are they allowed to go outside? What's the What's the, the mode there? They're not really confined inside the building. They're allowed to come out in the yard from time to time, but um, uh, they are closely supervised. And, and it, this is not the first one that these folks have, then, you know, several in the in natural area, and you haven't seen any problems. They do supervise their sites. They make sure they're good with the neighbors, and they clean up the, tend to clean up the site and keep close supervision over their site. So, uh, so this is not like they're confined, but they are not allowed to leave the site. Let's put it that way. Okay. Thank you very much. You got my answer. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Ms. Boris, are you all set? Yes, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think we'll see if there's questions uh, from the audience. Uh, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? Seeing none, uh, is there anybody on Zoom uh, that would like to speak in favor of this application? Seeing none, uh, is there anybody in the audience that has questions, concerns, or opposition? Uh, please come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Okay, my, my name is Marika Reed, and I have the tailor shop right across the street from the building that they want to convert. Can, and this you, is my sister Vicki, she lives right across the street. Can you tell us that address, please? Um, it's 85 Ash Street and Thank 51. You. It's kind of a corner section. So I've had the tailor shop for 37 years, and I did have the Police Relief Association building across the street for those for many of those years, which was great because it had police presence there. Because at the other end of Ash Street, we have a lot of drug dealers going on all the time. So it was really nice to be safe with the Police Relief Association. Then another person bought it and they subdivided it into like um, four, apart, four rooms upstairs. They had one kitchen and they were supposed to be paying $500 a month. And they had a person on site to watch over these other people. And um, that guy was charging them 650. So he was pocketing 150. <laughs> so the person that bought it wasn't even around there to even watch. And they would be outside. There was a lot of commotion. Police were there all the time. So <clears throat> that got sold to another person, okay? <laughs> and um, they had a lot of people in there that 
were loitering outside. And, it, and uh, to be honest with you, there wasn't a lot of parking. There isn't a lot of parking because I have Mark's furniture store next door. He parks his truck on one side. There's uh, city permit parking now. So there's like three or four cars on the left right now before anybody even moves in there. So there really isn't a lot of parking. And the other thing is if they do come in, I mean, if they're, it's a rehab, I don't think they want to be outside on the corner of Ash and Kinsey Street is a great place to hang out. So I'm opposed to it and hopefully it doesn't go through. Because not only for me, for my safety, I have my customers that come down there and park every day, tons of people going through, and I'm concerned for their safety also. And I have to say something. I leave Can you get a little closer to the microphone? Sorry, just so you okay. better, but make sure you get recorded. I'm the oldest of the group. My father left with my mother and left here with, you know, kind of responsibility. The place is not to be what these people, they're going to be. It doesn't have the parking. It's going to be KS in there. So with all the respect, I'm not going to vote for this to be there. And I wrote a letter. I was sick. I, I won't come, but I come in just you know, to tell you myself, the place is not for this type of business because they're going to go outside. It doesn't have the room for this particular matter. So that's all I wanted and to say. And if they have four or five you. people watching them, there's no parkings for them either. The, the, the parking will get addressed at the planning board if okay. it goes to that process. So okay. that's, that's really where that will get dealt with. But uh, let me see if the board has any questions for either of you before you sit down. Okay, um, thank you. Any questions from the board? I do, actually, oh. I do. When, when it was the police uh, community center, uh, I, I didn't realize it was that in operation for many years of that. Was that like a daily thing? Did people live there overnight, or was that like kids and police would show up no, in the day? No, what happened was the city had that for the police. Can you get, sorry, can you get oh, closer sorry. to the mic? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The city had that property for the police, so they could like stop and go to the bathroom, or if a police officer had to go to court and he lived far away, they had like um, downstairs, they had couches and TVs and they could sleep down there right. overnight or whatever and they would go to court or in yeah. between. So it really worked out well because there was police presence there and it was fantastic. But then they started getting taxed and they couldn't afford to pay the taxes on it. It was supposed to be a relief association so they put money into it uh, every year. So if a police officer got killed or something, then they had the funds to give the, the widow but then it was taxed and they couldn't afford to pay the taxes, so they sold it for $89,000, which was nothing. It was great to have them there, though. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We feel safe when the company is over there. That's okay, thank you. Any other questions? I think we're all set, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else uh, with questions, concerns, or opposition? Hi, um, my name is Ernest Gromblum. I reside at uh, 45 Kinsley, which is directly next door. Um, there is no real outside for the people to go except for on the sidewalk. And I would imagine with four people going to be there during the day that they would probably want to make some of that parking, or maybe, I don't know. But there's not really a lot of parking. There's not a lot of place for anybody to be outdoors. Um, I have my grandchildren over. There are a lot of children in the neighborhood, um, in the house next to me as well. Um, and uh, it's, um, I, I, uh, I do have a, 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 some concern about the fact that they're not going to be confined to the house. If the, I thought that when he was reading it originally, he said that, it was go, that they would be confined. But um, if they're going to be able to be loitering around, I, there's, there's very little to keep them from. It's a very small neighborhood, as you mentioned. Um, so there's not really a lot of place for them to, to go out and stretch their legs or whatever. Um, and I, that I am concerned about the safety in the, in the neighborhood for that reason. Hey, hang on. 
on second light to make sure. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, anybody else in the audience with questions, concerns, or opposition? Seeing no more. Uh, is there anybody on Zoom with uh, questions, concerns, or opposition? Okay. Um, Mr. Maynard? Yeah. I'm waiting for rebuttal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can come up for rebuttal. That's yes. Uh, some some of the people talked about parking. There's there's absolutely no parking associated with this use. They don't allow the residents aren't allowed to uh, have any cars, and there's there's no traffic to and from this facility uh, except for the supervisor, uh, one or two people staff. So. Uh, previously, the pre immediately previous owner was making illegal renovations to the property. Uh, the last permitted use was the Police Athletic League uh, Recreation Center there. Uh, any use after that was illegal and not, not permitted. So whatever they were talking about, I don't know, but that they were not a permitted use. They were Ill making illegal renovations to the property. So this is a very low key project very much needed in our community and uh, and it's well supervised as, as you know they have more than one facility now you haven't heard anything negative about the, this organization and, and they will do a good job for this particular neighborhood thank you and then those of you that spoke in opposition um, you can select between one or the other of you if you want to come back and say anything uh, but only um, are you okay, sir, if they, okay. And you know, when the first person. Oh, sorry, can you just sorry, say your name when the first person bought it, he told me no, that. No, sorry, sorry, your name and address oh, again. Oh, Marika Reed. Thank you. 11 Maywood Drive. When the first person bought that building, he told me that, that I was going to have no problem with the parking. I had a problem with the parking. He also said that they had other communities, that there's no problems. And I was talking to Dave Gottesman today. He came into the shop, and he told me that. There is problems where they put it on Temple Street and Pearl Street. He says they're all loitering outside. So he doesn't like that. And I don't particularly would like them being out there either on, on the corner. That's Thank it. Thank you. Um, Any other questions for me? Anything from the board? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, we're, we're, we're done with testimony. No rebuttal. No, no, that, Mr. Maynard had the rebuttal oh, for you, on behalf of the applicant, sorry. Only get one person. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, we, we can't, the, the testimony is closed. Uh, actually, we close the public hearing now, uh, and we'll open the public meeting uh, with, the, with the board only. Um, and again, uh, Mr. McCarr will be voting on this case. And I'll actually I'll start with your thoughts, Mr. McCarr. I, I do appreciate the concerns um, about parking. Parking is tight in this area. Realistically, though, this is not a residential building, even if it were. There's no use you can put this building to an address parking because there simply isn't room for parking on site. Uh, so I appreciate that any use that you put to you know, this building to it is going to have a parking challenge. Um, sounds as though the parking use is low impact. I, I do also appreciate the concerns around people hanging around outside because realistically there is no place um, for people to you know, gather, associate out, out, outside. That said, um, you know, this is otherwise a permitted use. The reason why it's here is because of its proximity to, as I understand it, Elm Street Junior High, which is gonna close um, as, as a school. Um, the use itself is an allowed use and wouldn't be here otherwise. As noted, it would go to the planning board directly as a conditional use where issues around parking and, and site issues would be addressed. Um, you know, otherwise, I think this is very much a needed use. It, it appears as though it will be run by people who are familiar and have been doing this for quite some time, so I have no doubt that it would be well run. Uh, but coming back to the property itself, I don't know what use you could put this to uh, that wouldn't have similar challenges. So for those reasons, I, I support the application. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lionel. Yeah. 
Well, like Mr. Mancara, uh, I don't consider the parking to be an issue. Um, I am concerned about the, the loitering of the residents that is that happens on, on in any of these uh, any kind of rooming facility, no matter what kind it is. Um, and there is no yard uh, really that uh, that they can be in. But I don't find that uh, enough of a reason to argue against the variance. Um, as Mr. Mancara said, if it weren't for Elm Street School, which, as he says, is closing, um, they would not, would not be here. So um, I am in support of the application. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boucher. Uh, I'm also in support of the application, uh, again, for the reasons Mr. Mancara and Mr. Lionel stated. Uh, I do agree um, uh, with the fact that, that there is concern, and, and I, I am sensitive to that. Um, but again, um, if it wasn't for the school, um, whether or not there was parking or any yard, um, this is a permitted use. Um, so I, I believe um, that the applicants, um, I do recognize the applicants have been here before. Um, I know that we've had other um, applicants that may have not been successful. But again, I do agree with the applicant's stance that, that they're this particular uh, if it seems to run um, the, the operation much better. So I have full confidence in that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the applicants in here and heard uh, the concerns of the neighbors, so I think that they'll be um, sensitive to that fact. But again, um, it's based on, again, um, why we're here uh, at the school. And not to say that the school will never turn into some other type of private school, um, but again, I'm not basing it on the fact that there'll never be a school there, but again, I think um, that uh, it, it it's it's uh, it fits in, and I don't you know again this is not up against the school, um, so I, I'm going to support the application. Thank you, uh, Mr. Neely. I think the applicant probably understands from tonight's testimony they have an uphill battle to win over the neighbors, uh, and, and you have a very small opportunity to do so. Um, that being said, I, I am um, cognizant of the of the concerns of the neighbors cognizant of the potential loitering, the parking. Um, that being said, this is such a critical need in this in this city right now. Um, and, you know, the school really is probably at about the quarter mile mark. I mean, it's got to be at the outer edge of this of this perimeter for what what this is uh, the requirement. So that being said, I'm in favor of this of this application uh, just because of the criticality of need. Um, you know, the applicant has, has really put forth a, a good application here as far as how they plan to run the operation. Um, the fact that the folks will be will be there, I know our concern is loitering, uh, but quite frankly, that probably not gonna be loitering outside in the middle of the night. Um, but it really comes down to the applicant, how are they gonna run this operation? And, uh, and for that reason, I, I am in favor of this, this application. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Perry. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, this application is here because of the proximity to Elm Street School. And uh, prior to hearing any testimony this evening, my, my feeling was there's not a close connection between this property and Elm Street School. And I didn't think it would be putting, say, any kids in danger, which is really the intent of, um, of keeping some separation distance there. If it were like a one street neighborhood where maybe kids were walking by or something, I, I might have a concern about it, but I, I don't have that concern in this situation. I, I do feel like Mr. Mincara that the parking is gonna be a challenge, whatever the use is. And this, I think, would be a bit of a less parking challenge than other uses. Uh, the loitering, I, I, it catches my attention. It's, uh, I, but I, I think given the need for this facility, uh, and most importantly, I, I think it's going to be a well-run facility, and I would encourage, you know, the Reeds or Mr. Ernest, I didn't catch your last name, I, I think if, if this is ultimately approved, I would encourage them to have the cell phone numbers of the folks that run this, because say if Ms. Reed were to say, hey, there was some loitering and my customers were turned off by it or if Mr. Ernst's grandchildren, you know, felt threatened, 
and, and a call was made to the, to the couple of people running this, I feel immediate action would be taken to correct the situation. Um, so overall, given that, I'm, I'm in support of the application. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Boras. I would like to be recused. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, I am in support also. Um, and I actually, we didn't explore this, but I actually would expect that the uh, clientele would be actually probably under supervision even while outside of the building based on the structure of this program. So I doubt uh, it would be uh, like some other facilities that don't have a staff presence that where residents are more free to come and go, I, I would actually expect and, and, and hope that that's part of what will be uh, part of this and maybe that will get uh, elaborated on at the planning board assuming this goes forward. But um, yeah, I, so I think uh, well, well stated uh, thoughts on this already from the rest of the board. I don't really have anything else to add. So um, would somebody like to make a motion? Mr. Currier, thank you. I'm going to make a motion for uh, Rise Above New Hampshire LLC, the owner, and uh, Andy Erickson is the applicant. The address is 49 Kinsley Street, requesting a various variance from Land Use Code Section 190-46, paragraph D, paragraph 5, to allow a single family home to convert to a halfway house within one quarter mile of a school. This is Ward 4 in the RC zone. Uh, the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property, which again is a halfway house, uh, given the special conditions of the property. And the board finds special conditions on this property is that it has not operated as a single family home for quite a while. It's operated, as I'm going to call it, various forms of businesses with living residences there as well. Also, we've had testimony there's been a lot of illegal uh, 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 residents. Uh, illegal uh, units there as well in recent years. Um, I think the board believes that the benefits sought by the applicant, which is this 28-day uh, uh, duration time for folks recovering from substance abuse, uh, cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue. I think the board finds a request is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Uh, in terms of property values, the board doesn't have testimony one way of surrounding property values of what that would cause, but I think the board believes this would be a well-run facility and would in fact be a step up from the illegal act uh, units that have been there recently. So I think with that in mind, uh, the board finds this is not contrary to public interest uh, because it's serving uh, a needed resource in the community for rehab. And I think the board finds that substantial justice would be served. So again, I make a motion to approve as applied. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Mr. McGarr, thank you. Is there any uh, discussion on the motion? I would just like to add in comment, not, it doesn't have to be put in the motion, but just in our discussion that we did touch on in the previous commentary that this is um, probably close to that quarter mile mark from Elm Street School and knowing also that in a year's time the school itself will be closing, but even independent of that, that it's still not really part of what seems to be the core part of the neighborhood. The, the presence of this facility and the school don't really have a lot of connection. So I just I wanted to kind of just have that noted in our discussion on the motion. So any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for our votes. Uh, Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Currier. Mr. Currier votes in favor. Mr. Mincara. Mr. Mincara votes in favor. Mr. Lionel. Mr. Lionel votes in favor. And Mr. Shaw votes in favor. That passes uh, unanimously, 5 nothing. Um, there is the uh, possibility of a rehearing request, uh, but you can go ahead and uh, proceed with your uh, plans as, uh, as requested here. And obviously, you have to still go to the planning board. So, uh, and likewise, for the uh, concerned residents, uh, there will be another opportunity in the process of, of this uh, structure uh, so you can weigh in again. Thank you for your time. Thank you folks. All right, that takes care of our regular cases. We do have a little bit of our other business that we uh, need to take care of. We don't have any re rehearing requests tonight. Um, we 
have, I don't think we have the next um, case because we're three weeks out. So normally we have the regional impact uh, review, but the next meeting is three weeks out, so that agenda is not finalized yet. Um, so, and usually um, staff sends that out for us to look at ahead of time anyhow. Uh, we do have minutes from the May 9th meeting. Uh, has um, everybody... Uh, had a chance to review those and anybody have any any uh, corrections uh, to make for the minutes okay um, and just for completeness uh, mr. Neely will be voting uh, on this uh, can we have a motion to approve the minutes uh, mr. Carrier thank I make you make a motion to approve the minutes of oops, I didn't May 9th. May 9th, uh, 2023, with no amendments. Uh, so a motion to approve as, as presented to us from staff. Thank you, uh, Mr. Neely. Thank you for the second. Any discussion? Um, Mr. Neely. Mr. Neely votes in favor. Uh, Mr. Lionel. Um, I wasn't here, but I will vote in favor because I didn't see anything that looked problem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Currier. Courier votes in favor. And Mr. Shaw votes in favor. That passes uh, unanimously 5-0. Uh, I think that is, is there any other business? Uh, I was Curry? just curious on the four-year information. Uh, oh, yeah. If uh, maybe if Ms. Fourier or uh, Mr. Derby would have any background on that, I'd be curious to know. If not, I could, I'm sure we could read it for ourselves. So. Sure. Um, so this is Ordinance uh, 2351 uh, that was recently uh, approved and adopted by uh, the Board of Aldermen. This is in regards to municipal signs and their associated approval process. Um, there are really two parts of this. Um, one was amending some language in the sign ordinance. Um, basically stated that signs that are clearly shown on a site plan approved by the Planning Board are permitted um, without permit. We don't want to do that. You would have to go through the permitting process for signs, so we just cleaned up that language. Um, the more substantial part of this ordinance is in regards to how uh, municipal government signs uh, receive approvals. So um, an example would be the Performing Arts Center. Um, a sign like that did require variances, as, as you are well uh, aware. Uh, the case would then be for uh, signs for municipal government uses. If they needed relief from the zoning standards that govern the sign regulations, they would not have to seek a variance, but rather a special exception. Primarily because for a municipal government to, for anyone, but I think even for a municipal government to argue a hardship case for variance from any sign dimensions or something like that, because the government serves a very unique case, it's, it's a very challenging, very appealable uh, interpretation. Um, so to relieve that burden on the municipality, which is really serving in the public interest, bringing that level, that, that bar down to special exception, uh, I think was, was meant to, to help the government serve uh, the public um, without you know, having the, the undue burden of, of justifying hardship. Uh, for not compliance with the sign regulations. Was it the performing arts sign that drove this change or? No, no, it was really nothing in particular. I just okay. used that as an example because it was highly visible. Because you think it was what, I'm sorry? It was highly visible and oh, everyone's okay. familiar with it. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, thanks. Yeah. I, I, I find it a bit, I, I don't consider the performing arts center to be a, a municipal building. I mean, yes, the city owns the building, but the the whole operation is being run by a separate company. You're right, and in, in that sense, it is a, a poor example. Um, a better example, I suppose, would be the new DPW building out on West Hall Street. Should that signage require any relief, it would no longer need to seek a variance, but rather a special exception. And the reason I brought that up is because the, when the Performing Arts Center came to us for its signs, there were some of the signs, at least one of the signs was request was flagrantly uh, against the ordinances and as we keep telling applicants uh, for electronic message center signs is they need to get the Board of Aldermen to change the ordinances rather than keep coming to us for variances and uh, 
I, it wasn't clear to me, especially given your statement that, uh, at least for the Performing Arts, Arts Center, that it's not included here. Right, and, and so for private enterprises, for advertising purposes that want to use an EMC, a variance would still be required. Yeah. Any other discussion, any other business? If not, somebody like to make a motion for us to adjourn? Well, Mr. Kerr, thank you. 745. We are adjourned. 745, oh. yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone.